What would you do if you have discovered that there are eight natural ways in which you can prevent diseases? Wouldn't it be a great help in this COVID-19 pandemic era that we are living in? I guess you would want to know. Well, brace yourself. You are about to be informed, not deformed. Wouldn't it be a good thing to live longer, happier and healthier to the point where you could see your great grands? I guess the answer is yes. Did you know that there is 8 health laws that if you practice them correctly, you will be in awe of the result you will receive and you will find yourself fulfilling this Bible text. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. 3 John 2 And this is a 3 dimension prosperity financially, spiritually, and physically. For what is the use of riches without physical and spiritual health? Well, I guess you have seen many millionaires and billionaires die because of sickness and their money or doctor couldn't help them. But what is the eight natural ways to prevent disease? The first natural way to prevent disease is pure water. Yes, a clean body and surrounding are dispensable for physical and mental health. Water is the single most important part of a proper diet. Our body uses 40,000 glasses of water each day to take nutrients to each cell as well as to carry away waste products. God has designed our body to recycle almost all of that. Water is also an all-purpose cleanser both inside and out. It is an abundant and effective for washing away dirt, germs and bacteria. All the functions of the body depends on water. It is the universal lubricant that makes everything else work well. A lack of water dehydrates the fluids, tissues and cells of the body. It causes the blood to thicken, increasing the risk of strokes and heart disease. Insufficient water can mimic hypoglycemia, causing headaches, tiredness and fainting spells. Our body loses 10 to 12 cups of water every day. The food we eat provides 2 to 4 cups of water. The average adult needs 6 to 8 glasses of water each day to make up difference. The more sugary syrup beverages you drink cause you to lose water from the system. Alcohol and caffeine are both diuretics which causes the body to lose water. So for every high sugar caffeinated or alcohol beverage you drink, you need an extra glass of water. Drinking water with meals dilutes the gastric juices and slows the digestive process. So the best time to drink water is between meals, half an hour before a meal or one hour after a meal. The second natural way to prevent disease is fresh air. Today more and more people are concerned with the quality of air they breathe and with good reason. It has been shown that even non-smokers who live in high air pollution areas suffer with the same kind of symptoms that smokers do. Every cell in the human body must have steady fresh supplies of oxygen to survive, especially in the early morning when there is less pollution. Abundant fresh air improves the brain ability to function, it gives clarity to the mind, it improves concentration and boosts learning abilities, it gives a sense of happiness and well-being by altering brain levels of serotonin and promotes quality sleep. Pollution causes air to lose these capabilities, which also cause sore throats, burning eyes, coughing, sluggishness, nausea, headaches, dizziness, exhaustion, and depression. Pollution is associated with increased asthma and other respiratory problems, and many of these contaminants have been linked to increased rates of cancer and other illnesses. In close areas, in long wearing of face masks, the same air is breathed and rebreathed over and over. The oxygen content decreases and the carbon dioxide and other waste increases. Breathing this still devitalized air increases tension, anxiety, irritability, and headaches. 
It promotes depression and chronic feelings of fatigue and exhaustion. Endeavor to get as much fresh air as you can every day. Here are some suggestions that may be helpful. Keep proper ventilation in mind wherever you are. Avoid car exhaust, tobacco smoke, and stuffy ill-ventilated rooms. Take fresh air breaks several times daily. Find the freshest air available. Breathe deeply. Exercise. It forces you to breathe deeply and speeds up the circulation of oxygen-rich blood throughout the body. Sit up straight and walk tall. This allows the lungs to enlarge and work at full capacity. Wear loose comfortable clothing, not tight ones that stops or slow down your blood circulation. For loose clothing allows the lungs freedom to inflate. Grow host plants. They absorb carbon dioxide from the air and produce oxygen for us to breathe. Some remove toxic pollution from the air. Fresh country air soothes the nerves, stimulates the appetite, and induces sound refreshing sleep. That is why God promotes country living, where you can see Him at work in nature and in your life, and there you get abundant breath of fresh air. The third natural way to prevent disease is adequate rest. A vital part of a healthful lifestyle is getting the right quantity and quality of sleep. It is during sleep that the body is able to grow, repairs damage, rebuild and recuperate, getting ready for another day activity. When the body is deprived of sleep, it is unable to rebuild and recharge itself adequately. There is an increase in irritability while creativity, concentration and efficiency suffer. Sleep deprivation impairs judgment, causing values and priorities to change. Continued loss of sleep can result in exhaustion, depression, delusions, paranoia, and hallucinations. Losing as little as 3 hours of sleep in a single night can cut the effectiveness of your immune system in half. Slow the reaction time and decreased concentration lead to an increase in accident. It is said that as many as 30% of fatal automobile accidents are caused by driver falling asleep at the wheel. 8 hours sleep is recommended and the best time to sleep is between 9 and 11 p.m. The fourth natural way to prevent disease is temperance. The word temperance when used in context of health has three very distinct meanings. Moderation in the use of that which is good, total abstinence from that which is harmful, and self-restraint more is not always better. Work, exercise, rest, eating and sunshine are all beneficial and necessary, but any of them taken to extremes becomes harmful. Anything that harms the body is counterproductive to good health. Do not use tobacco, alcohol, drugs, or caffeinated drinks. Avoid risky behaviors and activities. Self-restraint is an elusive goal for many. The appetites and passion must be held in subjection to the higher powers of the mind. This self-discipline is essential for mental strength and spiritual insight. We can overcome any unhealthy indulgence through the strength and power Jesus Christ gives us every day. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25 So even if it is good, don't overdo it. The fifth natural way to prevent disease is sunlight. Most of us would be amazed at how beneficial sunlight can be in the treatment of high blood pressure and cholesterol and in the prevention of cancer. Sunlight is one of the most blessed healing agents that God has given to man. However, sunlight has been given a lot of negative press because of the high incidence of skin cancer. Bad impression has been given that even small amounts of sun are harmful, which is not true. The fact is, some cause of skin cancer is due to overexposure of the sun, bleaching of the skin, and another factor is the amount of fat in the diet. Fat creates a basis for the formation of those unstable free radicals of the 450,000 people that are diagnosed with skin cancer every year. Most of these cases are caused by a high fat diet, excessive exposure to the sun and low levels of vitamin A, C, E and selenium which are found primarily in plant foods. It is true that excessive sunlight can increase the risk of skin cancer and cataracts. Sunshine in moderate amount has many benefits. It converts cholesterol into vitamin D, lowering the blood cholesterol, helping to prevent many types of cancer and aiding calcium absorption, which in turn helps prevent 
osteoporosis and tooth decay. It makes stronger denser bones and speeds bone repair. Sunlight kills many germs and enhances the immune system. Many skin diseases respond well to controlled doses of sunlight. Sunlight soothes the nervous system and is important in treating depression. It gives a sense of well-being by increasing endorphin production in the brain. Sunlight strengthens the cardiovascular system. It improves the circulation, lowers the heart rate, and normalizes the blood pressure and blood sugar, bringing highs down and lows up. Sunlight aids in weight loss, increasing the metabolism by stimulating thyroid production. Sunlight improves sleep. Natural light exposure in daytime increases melatonin output at night. Sunlight improves liver function. It is an effective treatment for jaundice. What about skin cancer? Melona, a quickly spreading skin cancer that is fatal in 20% of cases, is associated with lack of regular sun exposure and repeated burning of the skin. Sun should be taken in moderation. It provides so many benefits that avoiding it is not a healthy choice. At least 10 minutes of sunlight per day is necessary to maintain good health. We receive the sun rays even on cloudy days. However, ordinary window glass filters filter out 95% of the usual and the useful ultraviolet light. Sunlight which gives you vitamin D in Jamaica is between 7 to 10 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. but it all depends on the rising and the setting of the sun. The sixth natural way to prevent disease is exercise. There is a saying that goes, if you can't find time for exercise, you will have to find time to be sick. Let's look at a few reasons why this saying is true. One, exercise will reduce your risk of heart disease by improving the strength and efficiency of the heart and will lower your blood pressure. Two, exercise improves the strength of muscles and bones as well as ligaments, tendons and cartilage. Three, exercise increases the basal metabolic rate, helping us burn off many of those extra calories. Four, exercise strengthens the immune system. Research has shown that people with active lifestyles are less likely to get cancers of many kinds. Exercise increases the number of white blood cells called lymphocytes, which are the cells that fight disease. With all of these benefits and many more, regularity and consistency in an exercise program are at the very cornerstone of health. At least three times a week is recommended, but certainly every day isn't too much because we are created for action and it is impossible to be truly well without it. Exercise provides greater vitality, extra energy, and longer life. It helps us feel good. It is effective in fighting depression and in relieving anxiety and stress. Exercise increases energy levels, make us more efficient and productive in all that we do. Exercise helps on to reach and maintain proper weight. It burns calories, builds muscles, and increases the metabolism. Exercise stimulates the immune system. This decreases not only cold and flu infections, but also significantly reduces cancer mortality rates. Exercise enhances circulation, which in turn improves memory and mental ability and promotes better sleep and faster healing. It decreases the pain and stiffness of osteoritis by delivering blood to the joints and it can relieve headache as well. Exercise strengthens the bones, helping them to retain calcium and other minerals, thus aiding in the prevention of osteoporosis. Exercise helps protect from heart disease by strengthening the heart, decreasing blood pressure and heart rate, and lowering LDL, bad cholesterol, while raising HDL, good cholesterol. Exercise aids digestion and promotes intestinal activity, reducing gas and constipation. Without exercise, the machinery will cease to work properly. The seventh natural way to prevent disease is proper nutrition. Food is vital to our health. It provides the building blocks for growth and repair and fuel for energy. It is a key element in the length and quality of life. Poor diet contributes to weight gain, heart disease, cancer, and a host of other diseases. 
here is a practical plan that provides a complete balance of essential nutrients for radiant good health. 1. Eat a wide variety of fresh fruits and vegetables, grains and nuts, seeds and legumes prepared in a simple tasty way. This will furnish all the nutrients the body requires. For maximum health and energy, the human body needs a low-fat, moderate protein, high-carbohydrate diet with sufficient micronutrients and fiber. 2. Avoid protein from animal sources. Animal products provide an excess of fat, cholesterol and protein. They often carry harmful viruses and bacteria as well as hormones, antibiotics and other chemical concentration. 3. Limit fat, sugar and salt. Select naturally sweet foods such as dried fruit rather than refined sugar and choose olives, nuts and avocados all in moderation rather than refined fats and oils. 4. Eat a good breakfast, a moderate lunch and a light supper or skip the evening meal entirely. A large breakfast containing a proper balance of nutrients will give you steady energy all morning. According to the notable Alameda country study, eating breakfast has nearly as much of a positive impact on health and longevity as abstinence from tobacco. Timing is an important factor in dietary health. Food eaten in the morning is used during the day. Taken in the evening, it is stored as fat. Studies have shown that people have lost as much as 10 pounds a month merely by timing their meals correctly. The eighth and final natural way to prevent disease is divine power. What do trust and faith in God have to do with health? Acts 17 verse 28 stated like this, For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. That is Acts 17 verse 28. The reality of the matter is, without him, we can do nothing. For without him, there wouldn't be no you nor me. For true physical healing begins with the cleansing of our thoughts and feelings. All good and bad actions that affect our health have the mind as their source. If we continue to crave unhealthful foods and entertain other unhealthful practices, we will increase our risk of disease. The first step in overcoming unhealthful practice is to simply come to Christ just as you are. See Matthew 11, 28. Come to him and ask him to forgive you of all your past sins, including health-destroying practices. Second, establish a life of study in the Bible, especially concentrating on the life and teachings of Christ. Third, develop the habit of spending time with God in prayer. Find a special time and place to commune with God. Let Him know your concerns, struggles, and joys. As you do, you will learn to love and trust Him more. Fourth, Tell others about the life of Christ and the eight golden laws of health. As you share these precious thoughts and principles with others, they will be richly blessed. And lastly, never give up. Every sweet victory over health destroying practices will add quality years to your life. For good health is a great treasure. It is the richest possession mortals can have. Wealth, honor, or learning is dearly purchased. If it be at the loss of the vigor of health, none of these attainments can secure happiness if health is wanting. It is a terrible sin to abuse the health that God has given us. Every abuse of health enfeebles us for life and makes us losers. Even if we gain any amount of educational wisdom, knowledge, or material wealth, it was once more another eye-opening hope. Thank you for watching. Peace.